With the U.S. midterm election now less than two weeks away, which critical issues are likely to influence the way Americans vote? Pollster George Barna, director of research of the Cultural Research Center, joins us now to share his latest findings. George, it's always good to have you with us. So unsurprisingly, you found that 61 percent of those surveyed said inflation and the rising cost of living will have the greatest influence on the way they vote. But what else topped the list? Well, there were other economic issues as well that were high on the list. Food prices and food shortages were mentioned by 60 percent of the public. Oil and gasoline policies and prices mentioned by almost as many, 58 percent. And then beyond that, you had issues like crime and safety, policing. That was mentioned by 50 percent. And then the cost and quality and the availability of health care insurance and health care by 47 percent. Protection against terrorism, same percentage, 47 percent. Those were the top five. Well, I guess if what you've been told proves to be true, then the Democrats are in trouble. Maybe that's why they're campaigning on other issues like abortion. So what did you find there? How far down the list was that issue, abortion? And are Americans concerned enough about abortion to influence the way they vote or not? Abortion seems to be one of those issues where if you're already conservative in your leanings, if you've already made up your mind about who you're going to vote for, uh, it's not going to influence you much at all. Liberals, progressives, people who favor Democrats, people who are registered Democrats, those are the types of people who would say abortion is more important to them. But even there, it's not nearly as important an issue as what we found related to the economy. So I think your initial statement is right. In this election, Democrats are swimming uphill trying to find an issue that will knock Republicans out of the race. Well, that's hard to find. So what other less significant issues are candidates pushing that don't really resonate with voters this time around? You know, it was interesting when we looked at the bottom of the list, the issues that people say really are not going to have much influence at all on their voting. It was things like foreign policy, which again is a good thing for the Democrats because that's been pretty much a failure as well. But we can look at things like religious freedom. There weren't many groups that said that that was very significant to them or kind of a, a compelling issue that would cause them to vote differently. Other issues such as environmental policies, again, that's one that Democrats have been pushing, but very few people other than young adults seem to think that that's something that's terribly important. Uh, the size, authority, and, and performance of government, surprisingly, not something that people are saying is going to push them in one direction or the other. And income inequality and redistribution, again, one of the bottom five issues, even though those on the radical progressive end of the continuum are saying that ought to be one of the ways that we redefine America. OK, I'm sure you found some disparities between uh, concerns voiced by older Americans versus younger ones, also maybe black versus white, other people of color. Tell us about those. Uh, yeah, we do find, for instance, one of the fascinating things about, let's say, the black population is they were the only group in the country to rate racism as the single most important issue that will be impacting the way that they choose to vote. Uh, when we look at younger people, we find that, as I mentioned, abortion is important to them. Racism is also important to them, not tops on the list, as it is with the black community, but very important to them. And health insurance issues are also key to them. In contrast, when you look at people 50 and older, regardless of what segment within that 50 or older population you look at, you find that crime, health care costs, and protection against terrorism were the only things other than economic issues that were toward the top of the list. George, I, I want to go back to this a minute on religious freedom, because that's our First Amendment, freedom of speech, religious freedom. And I'm sure people don't go and ask their candidates, hey, where do you stand on religious freedom and, and, and freedom of speech? But uh, those are very important issues. Have you seen a, a change in that at all over the years? You know, what we've seen is that people have become less interested in that issue. It's almost as if we've taken that for granted and we assume that we will always have religious freedom, which is particularly shocking after a couple of years of COVID lockdowns where churches across the country were shut down. 
But I think one of the outcomes of that particular era was that many people realized they lived their life just fine without a lot of church going and a lot of church activity. And so there is a reshaping of the way that people think about religious freedom. They do want the freedom to believe whatever they want to believe. But to this point in time, at least, they think they still have that freedom. What do you think is likely to happen uh, in two, less than two weeks and why? Well, I think Republicans are likely to regain the House. I think they're probably likely to gain control of the Senate as well. So we'll see what happens. It's, I don't think it's going to be as big a red wave as some people have been predicting in the past. But I do think Republicans are going to come out of the election better than they went into it. Okay, Bolster George Barna, it's always good to talk with you, George. Thank you for accommodating us, and we'll see what happens. God bless you. Thank you, and same to you.